Hello and thank you for joining me. My name is Michael Bartnick from Software Solutions Group. Today I'll be going over EFT payables for Dynamics GP. I'll be showing you in Dynamics GP version 2016. I'd like to point out that there haven't really been changes between versions, so if you're on 2013 or 2015, everything's still the same. The first thing you need to do is set up your EFT file format. Um, the EFT file format is the instructions for GP on how the file that you sent to your bank should look. I'm going to skip over that for today, and if you have more questions, please reach out to Software Solutions Group or your Dynamics GP partner. After you've created that um, on your checkbook in GP, you'll notice that I'm going to grab Uptown Trust, and in the bottom right-hand corner, there's an EFT bank setup option. So I've already set up the EFT banking information on this screen. To set up the payables options, the payables um, options for EFT, um, I come to the bottom, which pulls up my EFT payables options screen, and I've set up a separate EFT numbering sequence as opposed to the check number sequence. So you can have a different sequence between checks and EFTs to easily distinguish between the two. Also, I've told it um, where I want the EFT file payments file to be generated on um, a, a local drive for me. You can have that go off to a shared drive, and um, I'm set now to start showing you uh, EFT payables and purchasing. So you'll need to go to your vendor cards and assign the EFT payables information. So I'm going to select Ace Travel, one of my favorite companies in the sample company. The EFT information is actually stored on the vendor address card. So I'm going to go to the remit to, and you can see in the bottom right hand corner we have this EFT bank option. So I've already come into the EFT bank maintenance window and put in my bank name, the routing number, and the account number. So by default, when you come to the screen, the bank country region is set to none. When I change it to United States, it allows me to fill in the bank account information on the screen. So at a minimum, you normally need the name, routing number, and account number. Um, you might need to fill in more information, but it's dependent on your bank whether or not you need to fill in um, the remaining options on this screen. So um, get out of this screen. And just to point out too, um, because you can have multiple addresses per vendor, you can control um, whether or not an invoice is going to be cut by, have a check cut or be paid by EFT. By, how, by the address that you select for that invoice. So now I want to create my EFT batch. For today, I'm going to be using the edit check batch process. You can continue to, you can use select checks if that's what you normally use. Um, there's only one minor difference between cutting checks and the EFT payment process, and I'll show you that in a second here. So your process should remain the same with the exception of this one, one option. So I'm going to add my batch, and here's the change. On the payment method on my batch entry screen, I want to change from check to EFT. So now, when I um, have my EFT batch, I'm only going to have EFT payments in there. I can't cut checks for anything in this batch. So I'll hit save and come back to my edit check screen. I'm going to go to my Ace Travel and select these two invoices for payment. Grab another vendor, select an invoice for payment here. Now, if I grab somebody who is not set up for um, EFT, and I pick one of these invoices, automatically GP tells me this invoice doesn't have the remit to address set up for EFT, um, so I can't add it to my batch. So I have to hit OK, and it's not going to let me pull it in. So if I was using select checks um, and I, to, to build my batch, it will only um, create uh, create payments that can be paid by EFT. It's not going to pull in invoices that can't be pay paid by EFT. So if um, I had an Ace Travel invoice where the remit to address was one that didn't have the EFT bank information, it's not going to allow me to put it in this batch. So I'm ready to process. So it's going to pull up the print payables check screen. Because we're using EFT, it's not going to print anything for me at this stage. So I can go ahead and hit process which then opens up my process payables remittance screen. From here, I can print my alignment form, a remittance form, and post. I'll skip over the alignment, go straight to the remittance. Um, so I can print a hard copy document of the remittance form for my records. 
I can also send an email to my vendors to notify them that I'm paying them via EFT and it'll attach a copy of the EFT document of the excuse me the EFT remittance document to the email. So I'm going to unselect the hard copy one and just print the emails. I'd like to point out too when um, you print the e when you excuse me send the emails if it can't send the email for whatever reason you don't have the email address set up it will print a hard copy for you. So I'll hit process. It will give me an exception report to tell me anything that it couldn't email out um, so I can go back and email and print those off. Actually, excuse me, excuse me GP is going to print those off just like it is right now. So this is, I'm going to go back here and show you my exception report. My ex exception report is telling me that um, the, first doc, the first vendor here, it couldn't find an address, email address, so it didn't email it out. And the second one, it emailed successfully. So my Word document over here that I'm pulling up is the hard copy that it couldn't email. So it does that automatically for me for anything that I can't email. And this is a Word template, so you can modify it, um, add a logo to it. Um, if you need more information on modifying Word templates, please see our video on that. So now, um, let me just go and check my email. And it looks like, yep, the email I sent to myself for the vendor has come in. So I've got a copy of the email. You can modify the message to fit your particular needs. I've got a very basic message. You'll see there's an attachment in a PDF of the check remittance um, for the vendor that I was able to email to. Well, let's go back now to the payables remittance screen. So I'm going to hit the post option now to post my remittances. I'm going to skip over the posting journals. And now my EFT batch is posted. So the very last step is to generate the EFT file to send to your bank. So if you come to Purchasing, Transactions, Generate EFT File, the first option is to select your series. By default, it's always going to be Purchasing. You want to select your checkbook next. And I have the batch that I just posted down below. I select it on the check mark, hit generate EFT file. Right away, it tells me it created a file for me and it put it in the location that I specified in my payables option setup. I'll hit OK. I can come to that um, location and I see I have my newly created file. It names it along, it adds the bank account name along with the date and an auto number. So it doesn't create duplicate doc or duplicate files if you create um, an EFT payment for the same bank on the same day. If I open it up, you can see it's just a plain text file formatted specifically for the, the, the bank. At this point, you're all done in GP. All you need to do is upload the file to the bank using whatever web portal or website that they require of you, and you're all set in the GP. So again, I'd like to thank you for joining me today for EFT Payables for Dynamics GP. Please check out our website and YouTube channel for more videos about Dynamics GP.